Hello, everyone. We are back. I hope you have enjoyed your networking time. And now let me introduce you to Alberto Martí. He has developed most of his career in Spain and UK, both in the IT sector and in higher education. And now he's working as open source community manager at Open Nebula. He loves to explore the many intersection between ethical innovation, open source technology, and human rights. And today he's going to talk with us about the past, the present, and the future of Open Nebula, expanding open source from the private cloud to the age. Welcome, Alberto. Come to the stage. Hello, Alberto. Hello, Hannah. Thank nice you. Nice to have you here. Okay, so now introduce yourself. We are going to remember that if you have a question for Alberto, you can write it down in the or you can raise your hand and they will come to the stage and they can ask you directly here. So thank you, Alberto. Well, thank you. Thank you, Hema. Um, thank you for the uh, for the invitation to the uh, to the Open Expo, this Open Expo virtual experience. I know it's, uh, uh, we were hoping to join the event, uh, the physical event here in Madrid, but then uh, obviously due to this uh, the circumstances, but uh, we're really happy that this event has turned to a, a virtual one. So congratulations for also for being able to to make such a transition in a in such a, a quick a quick time. Thank you, and a pleasure to have you here. I'm going to share my my slides then. Okay, perfect. See you now. Taking a while, but uh, you, you, you can you cannot see my my screen, right? It's fine. Let me try again. I think they went away. Oh, you can see my, my, my screen now, oh, right. Great. So it's me who cannot see my own screen. Okay, great, thank you. Um, uh, I have two screens, so that's why I'm watching sometimes to the... Uh... Okay, now I can see it, great. Okay. Um, well, again, thank you, thank you for uh, for the invitation, and thank you all for for being here to uh, on a on a Friday, uh, technically evening. Yes. Um, well, um, my talk today is about the uh, the Open Nebula uh, project, um, the way it's being developed till now, and the uh, the innovations we are that are taking place in the project uh, right now. I'm going to give you. A, an intro of uh, what Open Nebula exactly is, and the kind of projects we're doing now, and how we are moving from a uh, context that was uh, uh, private, sort of coming from the private cloud environment, how we are moving gradually into the uh, edge computing uh, world. So uh, that's that's me um, before the uh, the lockdown. And uh, that was me as well um, a few years ago. Um, just uh, happy that my talk is not taking place at the same time as uh, John McDuck's talk, because uh, there'll be a, a bit of a pity. Um, and that one here, by the way. So um, Open Nebula is a, a cloud management platform. Um, some people refer to it as the uh, the open uh, sorry the, um, the the operating system of the cloud, and I actually like that uh, that term. So we are uh, an open source solution to uh, build your own cloud, and we've normally and traditionally been used by companies and and corporate users that want to set up their own private cloud on premises. Uh, they Typically, uh, I either, they are either looking for uh, maybe an alternative to something that's a bit more complex and more expensive in terms of resources and, and money, uh, something like uh, OpenStack. I'm not sure if you've heard of this, but uh, yes, uh, it exists. 
And um, sometimes um, some people want to, um, they have some, some infrastructure, they're using some, uh, for instance, some VMware infrastructure and they want to, to create a cloud on top of that. And we also uh, offer that kind of, uh, of uh, potential. So as you can see, we are the middle layer between the um, networking, storage, and, and virtualization technologies that you need to, to deploy your cloud. So we offer all the, all the tools that the cloud administration, uh, administrator needs to, to set up a cloud on, this, uh, on these physical resources, to virtualize the resources and then offer them typically to their internal uh, users or corporate users in, uh, in a specific organization. Um, the number of technologies that we work on, uh, as, you, as you can see on this slide, we can either um, create that, this cloud on top of VMware, uh, vCenter typically. You can create a fully virtualized cloud on top of KVM. You can use um, LXD system containers. Uh, we have a webinar on LXD next week, uh, by the way, on Tuesday, with a technical lead from, from Canonical. So just have a look at the website if you're interested in, in LXD. And uh, one of the big uh, news we have uh, for the uh, for the new release that we'll be talking about in a bit later on is this new integration with uh, with Firecracker, which is the uh, it's Amazon Web Services uh, new virtualization technology. It's an, a really interesting open source project to create micro VMs, and I, I'll explain you a bit more about uh, what we're doing with Firecracker a bit later. So on top of this virtualized uh, infrastructure, you can use Open Nebula to deploy a number of services. You can uh, use uh, obviously virtual machines uh, over templates, or you can use you can create your own templates and create your own services, multi VM services. On top of that, um, have uh, users with different different uh, uh, rights to use this infrastructure. You can uh, or arrange for different different services and dynamic services as well as scaling your infrastructure. As you need, and you can also use tools like Terraform or Ansible to make this uh, this deployment uh, in, in a more efficient way. Um, I'll also talk about uh, a bit later uh, about uh, Docker and Kubernetes, which are also technologies you can integrate with Open Nebula in in a way that uh, helps you develop the the workload for for your DevOps um, requirements. So as I, as I mentioned before. Um, We've been a product that was born for for the private cloud for companies that needed a, a cloud on, on their on their premises. Um, this uh, sometimes has been used on uh, as a, in, a, in a hosted a, in a hosted solution. Um, what we've been doing in the last few years is a, a move towards obviously the hybrid cloud, and so a number of integration with uh, with cloud providers, public cloud providers like Microsoft Azure and, and AWS. For people that actually need to have this elasticity, this this degree of, of elasticity, and expand the resources they have in their private cloud and use some public cloud providers, on the basis that they actually have their own uh, infrastructure and they just need to have some peaks of demand that they need to integrate this this infrastructure from a third party provider. What we're doing now as well is moving towards the edge of this uh, of the cloud um, universe. And so we are embracing this concept of edge computing, which is uh, sometimes for um, a bit theoretical. I mean, lots of people talking about the potential that edge computing is going to um, is going to uh, provide to companies. We are actually implementing uh, a solution for for this, and it's a solution. It's just, it's a solution is going to be uh, actually open source, and I, I'll explain you a bit about this a bit later on as well. On top of all this, um, this solution, you can uh, access our marketplace with uh, with templates and virtual appliances, and deploy a number of services, pre-configured uh, uh, services on top of your infrastructure in a, in a very easy way. But things are getting a bit more complex. So why people use Open Nebula? Why people have been using Open Nebula for a while? Um, it's a um, it's a light solution compared with uh, with uh, other products. It's quite simple, um, relatively simple in terms of deploying the the whole solution and using it and maintaining it, uh, as opposed to other products on other open source products, as you know. Uh, it's very flexible in terms of uh, being able to um, you you. you um, 
most of the times doesn't take that long for you to adapt to the product to your specific circumstances or your specific data center. It's quite reversed. We've uh, over the years we've been able to to create a product that uh, works pretty well. Um, obviously, I mean, we have bugs as, as everyone, but uh, we have a community of uh, of users and and developers and contributors that uh, help us uh, keep the product uh, up and running and improving it. But uh, as you'll as you'll see a bit later, there are some pretty uh, large deployments in place, um, and we are quite we are quite uh, quite proud of that. Uh, and it's uh, it's quite powerful as well in terms of giving you all these different tools and alternatives for 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 you to create the the cloud, the enterprise cloud that you actually need, not the one that uh, the uh, the provider wants you to to have. In terms of, of simplicity, that's that's how the um, the uh, the graphical user interface looks like. It's a simple uh, web user interface. Uh, internal uh, web user interface for for the cloud admins or the users to interact with the with the solution depending on the the, the role and through this uh, the, the, through the front end uh, which can perfectly be installed in a, in a single node you can you can run uh, a pretty big um, deployment behind the Behind Open Nebula, the product, there is Open Nebula, the company, Open Nebula Systems. We are, we are an open source company. The company was created to provide support to corporate users where you know, they were actually um, um, adopting Open Nebula over the years and they, they were demanding uh, some professional services and support. As you know, and, and John Magdag was, was mentioning this uh, a few minutes ago, um, open source as a business model is okay. I mean, 15, 20 years ago, we were all discussing about the different options and the potential that open source had to, to sustain a business model and the other way around. Um, so we are in that process. So we are, we are an open source company. We provide a number of services. We are changing, we've been changing the model lately, slightly uh, to adapt to some circumstances, but um, um, in the end, we are a company that provides some services on top of uh, software that's uh, that's open source. Um, we are uh, we are a company that's born in in the in, in Europe, and uh, we're also quite proud of uh, these these origins, and that's actually shaped some of the some of some some of the uh, the approaches we have to technologies. We as we will discuss in a second as well. So, a bit of uh, history. The, the um, talk, uh, the titles, uh, the talk's title promised a bit of the past and then the present of Open Nebula. So, that's the timeline of the project. Um, it was in origin a research project. So, the uh, the project comes from the university, the university, the um, uh, the Complutense uh, here in Madrid. It was uh, created as a research project, and then later on it evolved into uh, um, a product that was used by corporate users. And that, as I mentioned before, um, led to the formation of, uh, of an open source company to provide this sustainability to the project and a number of services for, for the users. So it's pretty, it's pretty old in terms of, uh, I mean, relatively speaking. Um, it's been it's been around for a while. We've been adapting to the to different changes in in the context, different companies, different products uh, emerging here and there. And um, I'm I feel I'm, I have a, I mean coming from an academic background, I feel especially proud of being able to say that uh, Open Nebula is the result of uh, European funds and public funds that were well invested. So it's a project that lasted beyond the end of the project, and that's uh, that's uh, that's uh, something that doesn't happen that often, unfortunately. But um, but yes, uh, it's one of the main main characteristics. It's uh, it's actually uh, as it was referred to um, at some point is is a, a, a success story in terms of of, of public uh, European funding. We've been running our Open Nebula conference for several years. We had to cancel this year's uh, one and then we'll move it to, to next uh, April. And one of the main um, things that have been taking place lately is this um, One Edge project I'll talk to you about in a, in a second. 
It's uh, this uh, around 2 million euros uh, funding we received last year from the uh, European Commission to work on the first European open source edge uh, computing platform. But I'll give you some more details a bit later. Yeah, as I said, uh, yeah, pretty um, um, proud of being this, uh, an example of this success story for, for European uh, funds that have been well, well invested. So uh, as a company, as an open source company, what we do is um, provide support. Uh, we provide support and then we provide a number of resources for, co for corporate users. We are now at a time where we are actually uh, releasing, uh, we used to have a single distribution of Open Nebula, now we have two, the Community Edition and the Enterprise Edition. They are all, I mean, they are both uh, fully featured, but then there are small differences in the way in which uh, the, the Enterprise Edition gets uh, maintenance from, the, from, from, from us, from the, from the developers. Um, we have uh, I mean, the, this concept of Open Nebula subscription, and that's the, uh, that's the key for corporate users to unlock a number of, of benefits that we, have, we provide to those companies mainly that are, are contributing back to the project through, through the subscription. That's how we see, that's where, how we see this, uh, this mechanism. As part of this uh, subscription, corporate users get the uh, access to this enterprise edition I, I was telling you about, a number of tools to, to make the, um, the configuration a bit easier, uh, access to, the, to our support team, and access to professional services, and then also to a number of, uh, of exclusive resources for, for them. Apart from the enterprise edition, as I, as I mentioned, there's the community edition that's a fully featured version of Open Nebula under the Apache license. So, um, so we keep both both tracks. Um, who's um, who's using Open Nebula? <clears throat> there are a number of um, there are a number of companies and, and different from different sectors. We don't have any specific solution for for a specific sector. So we work uh, all around, and for, for many different companies, telcos, IT, gaming industry as well, uh, banking or public sector. Um, there are, as I said, some pretty large uh, deployments. With, uh, we have the example there with this, uh, one of the, our users with uh, 16 data centers all around the world. And, and uh, it's, a, it's a solution that works really well in terms of uh, distributed uh, infrastructure. So, so it's, uh, it's, one of the, it's one of the solutions that um, corporate users look for when they're trying to, to adapt their infrastructure to, to, to the cloud. The, the big news we had uh, last week, well, sorry, this week, early, earlier this week, uh, was the release of the um, of our new version of Nebula 5.12. We've been we normally work on stable versions. We release um, stable versions every six months. Um, so we've been working quite hard for this one because it comes with a number of um, of novelties, and, and we're really excited about this uh, this new release. It's going to open up a whole new world of, um, of possibilities for for many people. Because it integrates, as I said, uh, as I said before, um, Firecracker, but also a number of um, of other features. Um, as it is a tradition with uh, with Open Nebula, uh, we name the releases after a, uh, a real Nebula. Um, so in this case, it's uh, just uh, to celebrate this integration with um, with AWS um, Firecracker with name Open Nebula 512 after the Firework Nebula. So even if you want to read more, maybe during the weekend you have to, to um, read some uh, lightly content. You can go to, you can go to our um, blog and then you'll see, you, you can read this article about the, the actual Firework Nebula. So I said this, um, we're, we're really excited about this new release and uh, it brings us a bit closer to what we want to do with the uh, with this concept of uh, edge computing, making this concept of edge computing uh, something that works for people and for users. That's on the one hand the this integration with Firecracker I mentioned, um, and the other the other one that, that's going to be really useful as well is the um, the integration we've made with uh, with Docker Hub, so you can now. Um, run Docker Hub images and download Docker Hub images and run them as, as micro VM 
as a micro VM, and then you, you can let you let uh, Open Ebola orchestrate the whole the whole thing, and and that's going to be really really interesting. Integration with Docker Hub it works now for for our users as uh, as a regular marketplace for with for for uh, virtual machine uh, templates, but now you can download these images these containers directly from Docker Hub. And uh, Firecracker, for those of you who are not that familiar with Firecracker, um, Firecracker is a technology that was developed by AWS. Uh, it's, uh, it's based on, it's an alternative to QM. It's, uh, it works on top of KBM, so it's a virtual machine monitor. And it lets you um, operate micro VMs. So they are much lighter, they are, I mean, safer than, a, than a, just a container. So what we've done is to integrate Firecracker as another virtualization technology into our stack. So now OpenEvola can manage um, Firecracker micro VMs as we've been managing uh, KVM uh, uh, or, or LXD system containers. And that's that's going to be really, really powerful, especially for the for this edge computing approach as was, I was telling you about. So being able to very quickly orchestrate complex or multi-tier applications Downloading these Docker images um, from the marketplace, putting these containers inside the micro VM, and then orchestrating the micro these micro VMs either locally on your data center, or sending these uh, uh, micro VMs to to an edge location or different edge locations, and and obviously using Open Nebula's uh, orchestration layer and and uh, dynamic services to to provide some elasticity to the whole deployment. So that's uh, we're going to be releasing some 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 tutorials and some screencasts about this, these applications uh, in a few days' time. So if you're if you interested in, in, in DevOps, uh, just uh, have a look at the website or sign up for the newsletter and, because there's some really interesting stuff uh, coming very soon. And if you're interested in, uh, in, in, in Firecracker, you want to explore more about this, this technology, just, uh, just invite you to have a look at the, the website. It's an open source project. Uh, and, and there's, a, there's a Slack channel, and there's obviously GitHub, and you can have a look at this in more detail. So uh, I mentioned that 5.12, Open Nebula 5.12 brings us closer to what we want to do with, uh, with, the, with, with this concept, concept of, of edge computing, or brings us closer to our concept of edge computing, which for us, um, and for our users, it means um, creating a platform that allows you to uh, deploy things where you really need them, but on the basis that, that you have, you control your infrastructure and, and you control where exactly you want to put things and you control, um, you minimize, you minimize uh, locking risks, you minimize uh, costs and, and that is the basis of this project, this one edge project I, I told you about. And this is basically creating for us is this challenge of expanding Open Nebula from the private cloud and the hybrid cloud to the edge by creating this platform or turning it into a platform that can that can be used to, to for many companies to finally embrace in practical terms uh, an edge computing approach. This um, this fits into uh, the trends we as we we see in the market, and then obviously um, you all are familiar with uh, with these uh, tendencies. Obviously, from from the old mainframes to the client server um, uh, model to a more centralized cloud, which is the model we've been seeing the, in the past uh, couple of uh, decades. Now, what we're seeing is uh, with edge computing and with the emergence of uh, for instance, a lot of a number of, uh, of parametral providers and a number of requirements from some specific applications and, and users. What we're seeing now is this tendency towards the distributed cloud. And that's where the edge um, becomes really useful, having uh, parametral providers that can give you this capacity to deploy services and applications at the edge. That's what we find, find really, really exciting. And that's what we are actually doing. So trying to overcome these uh, this, uh, limitations or these uh, dependencies that uh, arise from uh, the public cloud model, which uh, is, uh, has been, for a number of years, has been promoted as almost the ideal, um, the ideal move for a lot of companies. But then 
over the t- over time, many companies and many many analysts have actually realized, that despite all the the, the, the marketing um, and all the um, the budgets in, invested in promoting public cloud as this this ideal solution, it actually comes from with some problems for for lots of companies. M- many companies cannot cannot embrace public cloud directly; uh, they have their own internal limitations. And in some of the cases, public cloud, uh, a public cloud model comes with, uh, with its own problems. Um, our approach is uh, it's, it's different. Where we come from, and it's in line with the with a number of uh, initiatives that are taking place now in Europe, for instance, with the with the Gaia X initiative, in which we 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 are uh, participating. Uh, and in terms of um, ensuring that companies both users and consumers of, of cloud um, infrastructure and providers can actually uh, operate in an environment that's more open for um, competition and, and technical um, technological sovereignty in terms of, uh, of not being so dependent on a number of small, tiny, I mean, a tiny number of huge providers and, and that's that's uh, that's been and um, has that's been identified as a, as a main problem in in Europe, and now it's been addressed by projects like, for instance, GaiaX for establishing this uh, federated data infrastructure in Europe that connects local and smaller local uh, providers, cloud providers, with consumers in terms of uh, consuming data, services, and infrastructure from this from these providers. And that's a really interesting uh, that's a really interesting project. And as I said, it fits completely with our this idea of uh, our approach to, to edge computing and our approach to what we call this elastic private cloud. Being able to have more freedom in terms of uh, moving resources, making your cloud elastic when you need it, getting integrating resources, hybrid, but mainly uh, providers, uh, I mean, edge resources from, uh, from environmental providers when you need to um, run applications or, you, um, or run some, some specific service closer to your to your end user. Uh, Biometal providers come with uh, their own benefits as well in terms of portability, in terms of, uh, of uh, pricing, uh, compared with uh, with uh, a virtualized um, solution by a public uh, public provider. So it's uh, it's a combination that we're that we're quite confident that will be will be useful to a number of um, of users and and companies. What we're working now on is in creating or transforming Open Nebula into something like this, this kind of model where you can run your own instance um, of Open Nebula, you can run your own private cloud, uh, you can have your connectors with, uh, with some hybrid providers, but you might also want to be able to access uh, a catalog of edge providers and in, a specific, in a specific locations or with some specific requirements and being able to deploy very quickly a number of resources uh, or complex services on top of those resources, of those edge resources. So that's what we're working now on, um, uh, unifying uh, an interface for, for a number of environmental uh, cloud providers to be able to connect with Open Nebula and then for our users to be able to select the resources they want and very quickly from our uh, marketplace to deploy a number of, uh, of services on top of those uh, resources. Um, some interesting case studies or user cases we've been uh, we've been working on and we've identified and, and among our, our customers and, and, and our user base. Um, gaming, for instance, it's one of the um, it's one of the one of the markets in which, in which we are, we're seeing that uh, there is a gradual tendency to obviously improve uh, the performance of, uh, of of gaming service by reducing latency, for instance, and putting things uh, closer to the end user. Um, same applies to OTT services and, and live uh, broadcasting. Um, the capacity of using and pre-processing part of these uh, services in, 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 in some intermediate locations between the, the source and the consumer that, that helps a lot and, and reduces these, uh, the workload that you have along the, the, whole, the whole system. Uh, that's that's something we are we're actually working on a specific project on this uh, uh, what we call the open nebula media media cloud and and that's uh, that's actually really promising obviously in terms of the internet of things um, 
there, there's a number of applications where um, um, which companies and, and public institutions need to run or, or deploy some services closer to the, the citizens and users. And again, um, having environmental providers uh, or other providers, as we'll see in a second, having these resources closer to the to the end user really that really helps. Telcos are some of uh, those um, organizations that are embracing edge computing as well, but in their case, they are embracing as them uh, this this concept as well as providers of, of resources. So as part of this uh, this movement, this uh, central office re-architecture as a data center process, what the telco company do, uh, what they do normally is to try to transform their central offices into a small data center. So um, in that way, they can either virtualize things that they, they normally deploy as, as a physical uh, device, like a router or something. Um, what they can also do is to offer the resources that they have in these central offices, which are closer to the end users. They can offer those resources to, to a third party. So you as a private company can just uh, get some resources from a telco closer to your end user and then hire some, some, some and rent some resources there and run your application on demand. Things like um, the VDI, uh, VDI uh, uh, desktop virtualization, if you want to, to deploy a virtual desktop infrastructure solution, in some cases, we've identified some 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 use cases in which, uh, in terms, of, for instance, of terms of uh, data protection regulation, you might want to a company might want to deploy specific um, resources, internal resources, including uh, virtual desktop, closer to their their employees when they are working uh, from home, for instance. Um, in terms of uh, for for DevOps, in terms of uh, Kubernetes deployment, uh, there are some resources on our uh, blog as well if you're interested in Kubernetes. Uh, but the edge, edge this edge computing um, approach also helps in terms of uh, of running complex um, Kubernetes based services and, and and allows you to run Kubernetes clusters closer to to the places where you actually need these uh, these, these capacities. So that's that's something that uh, will be improving the integration we have with Kubernetes in the over the, over the next uh, months because we know this is going to be interesting for a lot of users. And finally, if you want to give OpenEvla a try, there are there are different different options. If you are running some, if you have your own VMware infrastructure, uh, I will suggest you to to download what we call v1 cloud it's our small evaluation tool it's an appliance for you to run on, on, on vmware and you can just uh you can just uh, try open nebula very quickly a couple of uh, well, five minutes five six minutes you can get it uh, running if you want to deploy a, a very quickly as well a single node kvm or lxc or firecracker cloud you can do the same with what we call mini one you can get it on on our website and, and have your single node open nebula cloud running locally very quickly, or you can use uh, uh, an Amazon um, Web Services instance or, um, and, and give it a try. Uh, and again, I would like to invite you to have a look at the, um, the website. for the, we, have, we have a landing page for, this, uh, for the new version for Open Nebula 5.12. We'll be linking this, there are some, some resources and tutorials and guides for you if you want to explore some of these different elements and different novelties that the this new version brings along. Just feel free to to do that and sign up for the for the newsletter because there are really really exciting things uh, coming in the in the near future. So thank you, thank you for for you, thank you for your attention. And if you need anything, just uh, feel feel free to to contact us or contact me, and and we'll be happy to to help and, and provide you some more news and and information about the all this stuff we're doing. Thank you very much.